the Anguttara Nikaya, the numerical discourses, Chatukkanipata, Book of the Fours, Suttas 1 through 10, the section on Bandagama, Bandagama Vagga. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Anubuddha Sutta Understanding This is what I heard. At one time, the Blessed One was living in Bhandagama, in the country of the Vajji people. There, the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, it is due to not comprehending nor penetrating into four things that you, as well as I, have been wandering and transmigrating for a very long time in samsara. What for? Bhikkhus, it is due to not comprehending nor penetrating into the virtuous behavior of the noble ones that you, as well as I, have been wandering and transmigrating for a very long time in samsara. Bhikkhus, it is due to not comprehending nor penetrating into the collectedness of mind of the noble ones that you, as well as I, have been wandering and transmigrating for a very long time in samsara. Bhikkhus, it is due to not comprehending nor penetrating into the wisdom of the noble ones that you, as well as I, have been wandering and transmigrating for a very long time in samsara. Bhikkhus, it is due to not comprehending nor penetrating into the release of the noble ones that you, as well as I, have been wandering and transmigrating for a very long time in samsara. Bhikkhus, now, having awakened, the virtuous behavior of the noble ones have been comprehended and penetratingly seen. The collectedness of mind of the noble ones has been comprehended and penetratingly seen. The wisdom of the noble ones has been comprehended and penetratingly seen. And the release of the noble ones has been comprehended and penetratingly seen. Craving for becoming has been pulled out at its roots. Destroyed is the instigator of re-becoming, as now there is no more renewed birth. Having uttered these words, the Blessed One further said, The glorious Gautama, having awakened by himself, has understood and penetrated to the Noble One's perfect liberation through virtuous behavior, collectedness of mind, wisdom, and release. Having realized it by himself, the Blessed One declared it to his bhikkhus and to many wise sentient beings. The teacher, the wise one, by attaining Nibbana Supreme, has shown all the way to the ending of all suffering. Papatita Sutta Falling Away because, by not possessing four things, it is said, there is a falling away from this Dhamma and discipline. What are the four? Because, by not possessing the virtuous behavior of the noble ones, one is said to have fallen away from this Dhamma and discipline. Because, by not possessing the collectedness of mind of the noble ones, 
one is said to have fallen away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by not possessing the wisdom of the Noble Ones, one is said to have fallen away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by not possessing the perfect liberation of the Noble Ones, one is said to have fallen away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by not possessing these four things, it is said, there is a falling away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by possessing four things, it is said, there is no falling away from this Dhamma and discipline. What are the four? Bhikkhus, by possessing the virtuous behavior of the Noble Ones, one is said to not fall away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by possessing the collectedness of mind of the Noble Ones, one is said to not fall away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by possessing the wisdom of the Noble Ones, one is said to not fall away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by possessing the perfect liberation of the Noble Ones, one is said to not fall away from this Dhamma and discipline. Bhikkhus, by possessing these four things, it is said, there is no falling away from this Dhamma and discipline. Possessing the virtuous behavior, collectedness of mind, wisdom, and perfect liberation of the Noble Ones. Bhikkhus, by having these four things, it is said, there is no falling away from this Dhamma and discipline. By collapsing, they fall away, overrun by greed, only to take birth again. Others, by completing what had to be done, delight in what is worth delighting in, happily. Patthama Kata Sutta Destruction, Part 1 Bhikkhus, by possessing four things, the foolish, ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, blamed by the wise, and he accrues much demerit. What are the four? Without a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he praises that which should not be praised. Without a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he dispraises that which should be appreciated. Without a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he believes and becomes confident in that which does not merit any confidence. Without a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he becomes suspicious of that which merits belief and confidence. Bhikkhus, by possessing four things, the foolish, ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, blamed by the wise, and he accrues much demerit. Bhikkhus, by possessing four things, the wise, superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise, and instead he accrues much merit. What are the four? With a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he does not praise that which should not be praised. With a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he appreciates that which should be appreciated. With a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he does not place his confidence in that which does not merit confidence. With a thorough consideration and scrutiny, he becomes confident and has faith in that which merits confidence. Bhikkhus, by possessing these four things, the wise, superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise. Instead, he accrues much merit. By praising the one who deserves to be blamed 
and blaming those who deserve praise. He speaks that which only brings him much sorrow and pain. Although the fool gives away all his wealth, losing everything, what this person does is worse, for he brings himself far greater loss, lacking faith, slandering, and causing hatred towards the holy ones. Lingering on for the duration of 136 Nira Buddhas, in addition to five Ab Buddhas, the evil doing slanderer of the noble ones is stuck in hell, having abused them in words and thought. Dutiya Kata Sutta, Destruction, Part 2. Bhikkhus, by following a wrong course of action towards four individuals, the foolish, ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, blamed by the wise, and he accrues much demerit. What are the four? Bhikkhus, by following a wrong course of actions towards one's mother, the foolish, ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, and being blamed by the wise, he accrues much demerit. Because, by following a wrong course of actions towards one's father, the foolish ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, and being blamed by the wise, he accrues much demerit. Because, by following a wrong course of actions towards the Tathagata, the foolish ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, and being blamed by the wise, he accrues much demerit. Bhikkhus, by following a wrong course of actions towards the disciples of the Tathagata, the foolish ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable. And being blamed by the wise, he accrues much demerit. Bhikkhus, by following these wrong courses of action towards these four individuals, the foolish, ordinary person destroys himself and becomes blamable, blamed by the wise, and he accrues much demerit. Bhikkhus, by following the right course of actions towards four individuals, the wise superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise. Instead, he accrues much merit. What are the four? Because, by following the right course of actions towards one's mother, the wise superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise, and instead he accrues much merit. Bhikkhus, by following the right course of action towards one's father, the wise superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise, and instead he accrues much merit. Bhikkhus, by following the right courses of action towards the Tathagata, the wise superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise, and instead he accrues much merit. Bhikkhus, by following the right course of actions towards the disciples of the Tathagata, the wise superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise, and instead, he accrues much merit. Bhikkhus, by following these right courses of action towards these four individuals, the wise, superior person does not destroy himself nor becomes blamable. He is not blamed by the wise, and instead, he accrues much merit. Humans following the wrong courses of action towards mother, father, the Tathagata, or his disciples, here and now accrue much demerit, 
and they are blamed by the wise. As a result, they have one destination left for them, the plains of misery, hell. Following the right courses of action towards mother, father, the Tathagata, and his disciples, here and now the wise accrue much merit as they are praised by the wise. As a result, they have one destination left for them, the plains of delight, heaven. Anusota Sutta Going along with the stream. Bhikkhus, these four persons are evident in the world. What for? The one going along with the stream, the one going against the stream, the one inwardly strong, and the one who has crossed over, standing on higher ground, the true Brahmin. And which person, Bhikkhus, goes along with the stream? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual indulges in sensual pleasures and does evil and demeritorious actions. Bhikkhus, such a person is the one going along with the stream. And which person, Bhikkhus, goes against the stream? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual does not indulge in sensual pleasures, and does no evil or demeritorious actions. Although in tears and in pain he endures it all, while leading the complete and pure holy life. Bhikkhus, such a person, is the one who goes against the stream. And which person, Bhikkhus, is inwardly strong? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual, by overcoming all the five lower fetters that bind to the sensual world, he spontaneously is reborn after death into the pure abodes, whence he will never fall back, and where he is to attain final Nibbana. Bhikkhus, such is the inwardly strong person. And which person, Bhikkhus, is the one who has crossed over, standing on higher ground, the true Brahmin? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual, by destroying the contaminants, directly realizes by himself the taintless liberation of mind with wisdom, as he dwells and abides in it, in this very life. Bhikkhus, this is the person who has crossed over, standing on higher ground, the true Brahmin. Sentient beings, living, delighting, unrestrained, and lost in sensual pleasures, keep coming back to birth, decay and death, again and again. Victims of craving, they keep going along with the stream. Therefore, the wise, with established mindfulness, resort to avoiding the dangers of indulging in sensuality and of evil deeds. Fighting against the stream, they give up sensual pleasures and are called as those who go against the stream. Giving up the five lower fetters, he fulfills his training, no longer failing to control his mind with faculties composed. He is the inwardly strong one, it is said. But the one who has seen and gone beyond the highs and lows gives them all up by continuing on farther and going to the beyond. This sage, having lived and completed the holy life, reaches the end of the world and is now called the one who stands on higher ground, having crossed over. Appasa Sutta Sutta of Little Learning Bhikkhus, these four types of people are to be found in the world. What for? The one who has learned but a little, 
but has not penetrated to the meaning of the little he has learned. The one who has learned but a little, and has penetrated to the meaning of the little he has learned. The one who has learned a great deal, but has not penetrated to the meaning of the vast learning he has amassed. The one who has learned a great deal, and has penetrated to the meaning of the vast learning he has amassed. And who, bhikkhus, is the person who has learned but a little, but has not penetrated to the meaning of the little he has learned? Here, bhikkhus, a certain individual has learned but a little, that is, a bit from the suttas or discourses, suttas with a mixture of verses and prose sections, expositions, verses, inspired utterances or udanas. Thus was said sections or itivuttakas, birth stories or jatakas, amazing accounts, as well as the series of questions and answers. Of that little he has learned, he has not learned the meaning of the teachings and therefore not transformed oneself accordingly. Bhikkhus, this person is the one who has learned a little but has not penetrated to the meaning of the little he has learned. And who, Bhikkhus, is the person who has learned but a little but has penetrated to the meaning of the little he has learned? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual has learned but a little, that is, a bit from the suttas or discourses, suttas with a mixture of verses and prose sections, expositions, verses, inspired utterances or udanas, thus was said sections or itivuttakas, birth stories or jatakas, amazing accounts, as well as the series of questions and answers. Of that little he has learned, he has learned the meaning of the teachings and therefore transformed himself accordingly. Bhikkhus, this person is the one who has learned but a little, but has penetrated to the meaning of the little he has learned. And who, Bhikkhus, is the person who has learned a great deal, but has not penetrated to the meaning of the vast learning he has amassed? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual has learned a lot, that is, much from the suttas or discourses, suttas with a mixture of verses and prose sections, expositions, verses, inspired utterances or udanas, thus was said sections or itivuttakas, birth stories or jatakas, amazing accounts, as well as the series of questions and answers. Of that great deal that he has learned, he has not learned the meaning of the teachings and therefore not transformed himself accordingly. Bhikkhus, this person has learned a great deal, but has not penetrated to the meaning of that vast learning he has amassed. And who, Bhikkhus, is the person who has learned a great deal and has penetrated to the meaning of the vast learning he has amassed? Here, Bhikkhus, a certain individual has learned a lot, that is, much from the suttas or discourses, suttas with a mixture of verses and prose sections, expositions, verses, inspired utterances or udanas, Thus was said sections or itivuttakas, birth stories or jatakas, amazing accounts, as well as the series of questions and answers. Of that great deal that he has learned, he has also learned the meaning of the teachings, and therefore transformed himself accordingly. Bhikkhus, this person has learned a great deal and has penetrated to the meaning of the vast learning he has amassed. Bhikkhus, these are the four types of people to be found in the world. The one who has learned little and is lacking in virtuous behavior should be blamed on two counts for being absent of virtues and his little learning. The one who has learned a little but is restrained by virtuous behavior, 
should be praised for his possession of virtues, but blamed for his little learning. The one who has learned a great deal, but is not restrained by virtuous behavior, should be blamed for his absence of virtues, but not for his vast learning. The one who has learned a great deal and is restrained by virtuous behavior should be praised on both counts, for both being virtuous and for his vast learning. The wise disciple of the awakened one, being learned and expert in the Dhamma, is like a coin made of the purest of refined mountain gold. Even the gods and devas praise him, as does Brahma himself. Sobhana Sutta Pleasant Adornment Bhikkhus These four are the wise, disciplined, confident, learned, sustainers of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, and are the pleasant adornments of the Sangha, who are the four? Here bhikkhus, a bhikkhu is wise, disciplined, confident, learned, a sustainer of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, and is the pleasant adornment of the Sangha. Here bhikkhus, a bhikkhuni is wise, disciplined, confident, learned, a sustainer of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma and is the pleasant adornment of the Sangha. Here bhikkhus, a male lay disciple, an Upasaka, is wise, disciplined, confident, learned, a sustainer of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, and is the pleasant adornment of the Sangha. Here bhikkhus, a female lay disciple, an Upasaka, is wise, disciplined, confident, learned, a sustainer of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, and is the pleasant adornment of the Sangha. Bhikkhus, these four are the wise, disciplined, confident, learned, sustainers of the Dhamma, living according to the Dhamma, and are the pleasant adornments of the Sangha. The wise, confident, learned sustainers of the Dhamma, practicing according to the Dhamma, are the pleasant adornments of the Sangha, a bhikkhu who is virtuous, a learned bhikkhuni, a faithful and confident male and female lay disciples. These pleasantly adorn the Sangha. They are the pleasant adornments of the Sangha. Vasarajya Sutta Self-Confidence Bhikkhus The Tathagata has these four levels of self-confidence with which he is acknowledged for his leadership in gatherings as he roars his lion's roar and declares the Dhamma. What for? There is no recluse Brahmin, a god, Mara, Brahma, or anyone else in existence who could refute or reprove me by saying, Although you state you are perfectly awakened, you in fact are not perfectly awakened. Seeing there is no possibility for this to be the case, I abide peacefully and secure, without fear and with complete self-confidence. There is no recluse, Brahmin, a god, a Mara, Brahma, or anyone else in existence who could refute or reprove me by saying, Although you state you have eradicated the contaminants, you in fact have not completely eradicated the contaminants. Seeing there is no possibility for this to be the case, I abide peacefully and secure without fear and with complete self-confidence. There is no recluse, Brahmin, a god, Mara, Brahma, or anyone else in existence 
who could refute or reprove me by saying, The things you state are obstructions on the path, for all those who engage in them are in fact no obstructions at all. Seeing there is no possibility for this to be the case, I abide peacefully and secure, without fear and with complete self-confidence. There is no recluse, Brahmin, a god, Mara, Brahma, or anyone else in existence who could refute or reprove me by saying, The Dhamma you teach does not lead the person practicing it to the complete ending of all suffering, which you teach as the goal of the holy life. Seeing there is no possibility for this to be the case, I abide peacefully and secure, without fear and with complete self-confidence. Bhikkhus, the Tathagata has these four levels of self-confidence, with which he is acknowledged for his leadership in gatherings, as he roars his lion's roar and declares the Dhamma. The various controversial points on which recluses and Brahmins suspend themselves do not occur to the Tathagata, who is free from all controversies, having crossed beyond their mire. Self-confident and through his great compassion, he sets in motion the wheel of Dhamma, seeing penetratingly through it. He has gone beyond rebirth the chief among gods and humans, and is worshipped by all. Tanha Sutta Arising of Craving Bhikkhus, these are the four ways whereby craving arises in a bhikkhu. What are the four? The arising of craving in a bhikkhu on account of robes, the arising of craving in a bhikkhu on account of alms food. The arising of craving in a bhikkhu on account of a dwelling place. And the arising of craving in a bhikkhu on account of wanting to have a life here versus somewhere else. These bhikkhus are the four ways whereby craving arises for a bhikkhu. With craving as one's companion, a person roams in existences for a long time. Becoming this entity in one birth and that in another, one is never aware of the many births and deaths one endures. By seeing the danger of how craving itself is the origin of suffering, of dukkha, one becomes free from craving. Such a bhikkhu goes forth mindfully, picking up only to let go. Yoga Sutta Bonds Bhikkhus, these are the four types of bonds. What for? The bond of sensuality, the bond of becoming, the bond of views, and the bond of ignorance. And what bhikkhus is the bond of sensuality? Here bhikkhus, someone does not know nor understands as it actually is, the coming into being, the fading away, indulgence and the danger of sensuality and especially the escape from it as it really is. Bhikkhus, because such a person does not know nor understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger of sensuality, and especially the escape from it, he becomes entrapped by sensual lust, infatuated by it, attached to it, and enmeshed by it, lost in sensual stupor, thirsty and feverish with passion, remaining attached to sensual lust that fills the mind persistently with sensual craving. Because this is called the bond of sensuality. 
While this is the sensual bond, what then is the bond for becoming? Here because someone does not know nor understands as it actually is, the coming into being, the fading away, indulgence, and the danger of becoming, and especially the escape from it as it really is. Because, because such a person does not know nor understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence, and danger of becoming, and especially the escape from it, he becomes entrapped by the lust for becoming, being infatuated by it, attached to it, and enmeshed by it, lost in the stupor of becoming, thirsty and feverish with passion, remaining attached to the lust for becoming that fills the mind persistently with craving for existence. Bhikkhus, this is called the bond for becoming. While these happen to be the sensual bond and the bond for becoming, what then is the bond of views? Here Bhikkhus, someone does not know nor understands as it actually is, the coming into being, the fading away, indulgence in, and the danger of views, and especially the escape from them as they really are. Bhikkhus, because such a person does not know nor understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger of holding on to views and especially the escape from them, he becomes entrapped by the lust for having views, being infatuated by them, attached to them, and enmeshed by them, lost in the stupor of views, thirsty and feverish with passion remaining attached to the lust for them that fills the mind persistently with craving for views. Bhikkhus, this is called the bond of views. While these happen to be the sensual bond, the bond for becoming, and the bond of views, what then is the bond of ignorance? Here, Bhikkhus, Someone does not know, nor understands as it actually is, the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and the danger, and especially the escape from the six bases of sense contact as they really are. Bhikkhus, such a person does not know, nor understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger, and especially the escape from the six bases of sense contact, he is ignorant and unknowing of how the six bases of sense contact fill the mind persistently with ignorance and not knowing. Bhikkhus, this is called the bond of ignorance. These bhikkhus are the bonds of sensuality, the bond for becoming, the bond of views, and the bond of ignorance. Fettered by evil, demeritorious states that defile the mind, pushing one to a troubled re-becoming, that ripen in a new birth, further suffering, old age and death, one is thus left as a slave in bondage, unable to taste the peace of freedom. Bhikkhus these are called the four bonds. On the other hand, bhikkhus, there are these four types of severances of bonds. What are the four? The severances of the bond of sensuality, the bond for becoming, the bond of views, and the bond of ignorance. And what, bhikkhus, is the severance from the bond of sensuality? Here, bhikkhus, Someone knows and understands as it actually is, the coming into being, the fading away, the indulgence and the danger of sensuality, and especially the escape from it as it really is. Bhikkhus, because such a person does know and understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger of sensuality, and especially the escape from it, he becomes free from lusting after sensuality, 
no longer infatuated by it, whereby he is detached from sensual lust, and the thirst for further sensuality no longer fills his mind persistently with sensual craving. Bhikkhus, in this way the bond of sensuality is severed. Bhikkhus, this is called severance from the bond of sensuality. While this is the severance from the sensual bond, what then is the severance from the bond for becoming? Here, Bhikkhus, someone knows and understands as it actually is, the coming into being, the fading away, indulgence, and danger of becoming, and especially the escape from it as it really is. Bhikkhus, because such a person does know and understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger of becoming, and especially the escape from it, he becomes free from lusting after becoming, no longer infatuated by it, whereby he is detached from craving to be reborn, and the thirst for further existence no longer fills his mind persistently with craving for becoming. Bhikkhus, in this way the bond of becoming is severed. Bhikkhus, this is called severance from the bond for becoming. While these are the severances from the sensual bond and the bond for becoming, what then is the severance from the bond of views? Here, Bhikkhus, someone knows and understands as it actually is, the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and the danger of views and especially the escape from them as they really are. Bhikkhus, because such a person does know and understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger of holding on to views and especially the escape from them, he becomes free from lusting after holding on to views no longer infatuated by them, whereby he is detached from views, and the thirst for further attaching himself to views no longer fills his mind persistently with craving for views. Bhikkhus, in this way the bond of views is severed. Bhikkhus, this is called severance from the bond of views. While these are the severances from the sensual bond, the bond for becoming, and the bond of views, what then is the severance from the bond of ignorance? Here, Bhikkhus, someone knows and understands as it actually is the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and the danger of the six bases of sense contact, and especially the escape from them as they really are. Bhikkhus, because such a person does know and understands the coming into being, fading away, indulgence in, and danger of the six bases of sense contact, and especially the escape from them, he becomes free from ignorance and becomes wise, no longer infatuated by them, whereby he is aware and knowing of how the six bases of sense contact no longer fill his mind persistently with ignorance, and he remains aware of them. Bhikkhus, in this way the bond of ignorance is severed. These bhikkhus are the severances of the bond of sensuality, the bond for becoming, the bond of views, and the bond of ignorance. Severed from evil, demeritorious states that defile the mind, pushing one to a troubled re-becoming that ripen in a new birth, further suffering, old age and death, one is thus freed from being a slave in bondage, finally able to taste the peace of freedom. Bhikkhus these are called the severances of the four bonds. Tied and fettered by the bonds of sensuality, 
becoming and views, led by the bond of ignorance, sentient beings roam aimlessly from birth to death. But those who, having thoroughly known and understood the bonds of sensuality and of becoming, completely destroy the bond of views while severing ignorance too. For it is they alone who are the ones who free themselves from bondage, having gone beyond, now able to taste the peace of true freedom. Sad, sad, sad.